When I first got into nonfiction, I read all of these self-help books that said they could add all these hours to my day. How? Well, it basically came down to stop watching TV. They would say it in a roundabout way, but that was what they were saying. The average American watches about four or five hours of TV, they would say, and if you just cut out TV, you just earn four or five hours to start working on your side hustle, whatever you wanna do. But now, TV has actually been on the decline. We're watching less and less TV, as the studies will show, but the screen time has not been on the decline. There's a lot of media out there, a lot of different forms, different mediums of media, and they can be equally as time consuming, equally as dangerous for our kids. So we're gonna talk about those today. <laughs> Please don't forget to subscribe for more videos on money, minimalism, and our travel journey around the world. We publish a new video every Friday. So yes, TV has been on the decline. People are watching less and less TV, but that's mostly based on statistics from cable companies. So they were watching less and less cable. Streaming services obviously have been on the rise. Cell phones, iPads, everything else have been on the rise, mindlessly scrolling through Snapchat feeds and Facebook feeds and Instagram feeds. That has definitely been on the rise, and I think just about all of us can attest to that. So if you thought that all that time we used to spend watching TV has went to more productive things, absolutely not. And as parents, we have to tackle this overconsumption of media, but how are we going to do that? Are we just never going to let kids watch TV or never let them have a phone or anything? I mean, it doesn't have to be that extreme. But just like with most things, we can combat the mindlessness and the lack of intentionality with mindfulness and intentionality. And the first step is to be mindful about everything that comes into our home, all the media devices, all the media itself, which is often forgotten whenever we just think about the devices kids are using. But we need to be intentional and mindful about all this stuff coming into our home. And it's a lot. So how much screen time is too much screen time? How much is enough? How much screen time? That's the question. I've talked to and polled parents from all across the spectrum, from parents that have no limit on their child's screen time to parents that have extreme limits on their child's screen time. And these are the things that I've come up with. And usually I say, there's no one size fits all. There's no wrong answer here. There is a wrong answer here. And I believe if you're just letting your kid consume media at whatever rate they want to, and you have no limit on it whatsoever, I do think that's the wrong answer. Sure, that's still my opinion, but I've seen the effects of what that can do to kids to not have any sort of limit on their screen time at all. Kids need a limit, they are not capable of limiting themselves. And sure, it's your decision, but I will say if you're using screen time as a babysitter, you're doing it wrong, and a lot of parents are doing that. And to be honest, if you're feeling defensive right now about how much screen time you allow your kids to have, there may be a reason you feel so defensive and why you feel the need to defend how much screen time you let your kids have. Maybe it's too much, and you know it's too much, but it's just the easy way out. And I'm fine with negative comments, I'm fine with people bashing this video any of that stuff is fine with me i don't really care i don't make money from this i just want you to know that screens whether ipads or iphones or phones in general or computers are not babysitters so how much screen time should be allowed first off know that screen time means all screens so that's television that's pads that's phones that's laptops all screen time any sort of media intake you have to include that I've already done a video on when is the right age to give your kid a phone, so I'll put a link to that and I'll put a thing up here somewhere I think that can link to that video as well. So if that's your main question is about kids and cell phones, go watch that video. But this is just for screen time in general. And as your kid gets older, you want them to be able to make their own decisions, but the younger they are, the more you have to monitor and you have to be responsible for the screen time they have. And I would hope that you would limit yourself on your screen time. I'm sure you're not just on your phone 24 seven. You have a job, you have things to do, so we can't do that. So if we're gonna limit ourselves, why would we not limit our kids? And once you get over an hour a day in media consumption, screen time, that's when when it really starts to get dangerous. That's whenever it starts to be, your kid starts to become dependent upon the media and the screen. And one hour a day is a lot. So if we had to talk about specifics and limits, I would say that at most, you should give your kids one hour a day. I think that's kind of the upper limit. And especially if your kids don't get screen time every day, you may feel like the need to give them more screen time when they do, but I wouldn't necessarily do that. So this is how we do screen time in our home. You can do it like we do it. I wouldn't do it exactly like we do it, but you can make your own way out of this. This is just what we do, so you can take some tips and ideas and hopefully create your own system. We aren't anti-technology parents. Technology can be useful and it does have its place. There are plenty of educational apps and games out there. Some of them are really helpful. A lot of them are really low quality education, like the education value is really low quality. 
but there are still some good ones out there. So it's good to take a break occasionally and maybe use technology, but technology doesn't make the best teacher. And we have the days on especially Saturday mornings sometimes when we'll, we'll let our kids play video games together, but it's together. It's not them alone in the room playing a game. It's all of our kids playing the same game together, or they'll play a board game or something like that. That's more often the case, but either way, they're doing it together. And honestly, other than the video game Saturdays that we have sometimes, our kids don't really get screen time, and they're okay with that. They read a lot, they play outside, they do things that kids are supposed to do, they just don't get a whole lot of screen time. And they're okay with it because they never really have had a whole lot of screen time. And if our kids ever do need to use the computer, whether it's for school or something else, or if they just want to look something up, that's fine. They always have to be in pairs, they can't ever use it by themselves, they have to have someone there to watch them or or at least to be present. They don't have to watch everything they're doing. But usually we'll say yes 99% of the time, I would say, because they don't ask to get on the computer very often. The media threat. To kind of sum all of this up and to just kind of say what I'm trying to say here, I've done a lot of other videos on this topic. I would say go watch the cell phone video that I did on which age is the appropriate age for kids to have a phone. I did another video that was actually an article in Simple Money Magazine called The Ad Threat that turned into a video, and I'll put a link to that video as well. And that was explaining the dangers of advertising and the media and the marketing companies and what they're trying to get our kids to do and buy. If we don't pay attention to the media that comes into our home, then the marketers and the advertisers are going to get our kids. And they're gonna get our kids to buy their stuff, they're gonna get this young brand loyalty, they're gonna get all of this stuff because we aren't being mindful of what's coming into our home so we have to monitor that that's the main point point. and it's becoming the norm for kids to get a phone at a young age for them to have free reign on the computer as much as they want to to have free use of technology and to be on it 24 7. we see families eating all the time at a restaurant and everyone in the family including the parents are on their phones or on some sort of a pad or the parents may be talking and they have the pads babysitting the kids we see this all the time, but media presents a lot of threats. And I'm not just talking about the obvious threats like pornography and some of the terrible things that can come into our home, but it can really hinder our kids thinking and especially thinking outside the box. And it just kind of slows down their entire train of thought whenever they spend a lot of time mindlessly using technology. Maybe you've seen the videos where someone goes undercover and they try to lure a teen to meet them at a certain place because they, maybe they've only talked online. So I just got a text, my parents just left. I can be at the park in 10 minutes. Michaela? Where are you? From Facebook. And they can get the teen to actually meet them somewhere, knowing that they're supposedly a grown person, and this 14 or 15 year old kid wants to meet this person they met online, and the parents are always surprised it works, even if the parents have zero limits on technology. Michaela, are you crazy? They're like, oh, I never thought my kid, that's the whole thing, is I never thought my kid sort of thing. But it works all the time because they don't have limits on technology and they give them free reign as if they're responsible enough to handle it, and they're not. No kid is responsible enough to handle free reign on technology. I just think the biggest enemy here is overlooking how dangerous media can actually be. We say it's 2022, kids should be able to do whatever they want to, other parents are doing it. Everyone else is doing it, so we might as well do it. It's the norm. Our kids are going to feel left out if they're not with all their friends and all their groups and their chats and everything. But that doesn't mean we have to do that with our kids. Sometimes it's good to not be normal. Usually when you're intentional, that's almost the opposite of being normal because most parents are not intentional. It's our job to protect our children from the world whenever they're too young to understand what they need protection from. So we have to do our part. If you're interested in raising intentional children and learning more about this concept of being intentional in your parenting, check out my new book, Intentional Children. I have an entire chapter on screen time in there. Again, please don't forget to subscribe for more videos on money, minimalism, and our travel journey around the world. That is all for today. I will see you next week.